All right, fuck it. We're recording. Let's do it. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the 44th episode of The Get Down. I think that's right. I hope so. 44. <laughs> 44. So, all right, this is going to be another one of those weird episodes. We have Gary sitting literally right next to me. I'm yeah. going to turn my, my camera here. Crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, now I'm coming up here once a month to DJ last we learned a lot from the last uh, the last experience, um, especially DJ wise. It actually spawned GDU bites from this week uh, or last week uh, from when, when this is going to come out. Um, updating your OS because I had an issue doing that. Now I have a new computer. Now that's going to be a whole another fun thing this weekend. Yeah, like all literally the entire GDU bites was spawned because of your trip. Right, and then a lot of the things I talked about, like we're gonna we have to go to Jersey City early tonight, to, so you can. Right plug in, make sure you're good. Right. Like you downloaded the drivers ahead of time, but you never really know. Right. Like even just now going to set up on your home stuff, like it's not working and it's an issue yeah. and it's, it's, a, it's every DJ's nightmare. So, um, you know, growing pains with a new computer and whatnot. So that'll be, it's just another stressful thing. Like it, it'll be worth it though. Yeah. Well, I love, well, I, all the DJs that are listening to this, I'm in love with the, I got the MacBook air one terabyte, 500 uh i'm sorry one terabyte 16 gig ram it's so easy to travel with to pull it out on the plane was fantastic doing work on the plane with it was so good um so just like completely plugging apple and we really don't need to but it was it was really worth it i got a, a student discount with it you know really playing the system yeah you deserve it and um it really wasn't that expensive 1600 bucks out the door, tax and everything. Yeah, that's not bad. So I think it'll alleviate some of the issues that you had the last time you were up that we're up here and whatever, man. Sometimes it's just time to upgrade. Right. So I was I had a mid 2013. That's actually what I'm using right now for office. I'm, I'm and it's 16 gig, 500. Uh, wow, J Dime five, special <laughs> guest appearance in the background. But 500 uh, gigs and, and 16 gigs of RAM. So it's still it's a powerful computer, but it's eight years old. So a little difficult to. Uh, to keep up with like zooming and then doing all the all the other things that you need to do but i have streamed so much now with the new computer i know you've been, you've been streaming every night i'm every like get night. down dj streaming like who's streaming tonight i've been doing it every night because it's just the new computer can handle the obs and everything and, and i don't have to worry about you know dropouts or anything like that yeah so i think this this is an interesting weekend too because it's changed so much even since you were up here last like we're really jammed out where we're not even really hanging out this weekend because we're right. just straight working from tonight until Sunday night. You know, and, t and soon enough we'll be doing Thursdays. Yeah, and and it's just going to be crazy. But um, we have two new venues that we're booking right now. Can you name? Can you name them? Well, yeah. Midland's one. Midland Brew House, right in Jersey, in Midland Park, and then. Um, it's funny. One of the, one of the venues that we work with in Charleston actually is owned by a, re a group, a bar group right. in New York city that owns best bar group, which is like stumble in and the hair of the dog. And they have like seven or eight different venues. So we're going to be doing some stuff with them, which is cool. Like iconic New York city, like college bars, basically for, for people that don't know that hospitality group, go look them up. Hair of the dog is i don't know if i hung out there but the stumble stumble in, in was a big one a, like yeah. that is a new york city staple um so hopefully we'll be having guys in there soon and i mean listen i don't remember walking out of those places because it's, <laughs> that's all it is like that's like one of the first places i saw shot wheel yeah you know that's i i feel like those types of bars they're jam-packed bars yeah they want to party and yeah. like have a good time yeah. so that should be cool I think it's cool to to have some some venues in the city again, which yeah. will, which will be nice to kind of change things up. But um, yeah, so like it's good. We're seeing more and more. The summer's about to happen, and I think something that I heard on a podcast lately, I think it was a Tim Ferriss podcast, and it was someone who was talking about mental health. It was someone who I think he was like an ex monk, and he's just really into like meditation and and self care and self health or whatever. Right. And he was saying a lot of the reason why a lot of people were struggling through this last year and a half is because you can't hard your hard work your way out of the situation. Right. And most successful people, 
like can hard, can just work harder. Right. And if you work harder, you're, you're going to like get out of whatever hole you're in, but you can't do that. Yeah. Or you couldn't do that. I, the, the, the being like hand tight constantly, right. And handcuffed, like, and you, and you, you can put all this other work in to stay relevant, social media podcasts. That's why this is even here. We, we talk about that all the time. Um, but you really weren't getting anything as far as pay is concerned. Right. You know, so you're, you're building like equity, like brand equity, essentially. Right, right. Which we were lucky enough. And we've had plenty of guests on the podcast that said, oh, look what you guys are doing with GDU. Love what you're doing with the podcast and staying relevant through, uh, via social media. And that was all big for us. But it's still stressful when there's not, when there's no checks coming. Right. In. You still got to pay their bills. The bills are still coming through. And like we said before, like the unemployment was nice. That extra 600 bucks at the time was nice. Yeah. I'm still getting 300 some people. Um, but it, it pales in comparison to what we usually make and like what bartenders usually make. And you just, and that, that whole situation was very, very stressful and still continues to be stressful because a lot of people aren't financial out of the financially out of the hole that, they've dug themselves into over yeah. the last year. Um, you know, I, I see it with, with a lot of people in, in not just DJ industry, but, you know, chefs and bartenders and waiters and waitresses, um, because I continue to work in, in, in hospitality in, in golf right now. And the people I talk to there, it's just, it's a lot of displaced people in our, our, uh, fields, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I wanted to bring it up because it, it made so much sense to me. I was like, wow, I never really thought about that. Like, yeah, it's so right. Like if you're struggling in, in school, for example, like you're going to spend more time reading and right. studying and like, you're going to figure it out. Or if you need more out, you need more money. You just work more hours at work. And like, right. it's it just, it's crazy. But I think now one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it up is because like your hard work is now starting to pay off again. Yeah. So even if you weren't doing anything for so long, you know, something we talk about, you shouldn't be doing, but right. if you even start working right now, that work should hopefully pay off in, in the form of gigs and, and relationships and networking and, and money. I was thinking about like the bigger DJs when, you know, in talking about this, because those guys, those like the bigger, like the, the beat breakers of the world, um, those guys really weren't working at all because yeah. like, they're not going to go and take those smaller gigs. Right. So I, I feel like the, the the mental pressure probably for those guys was even exponentially higher due to the fact that they really couldn't do anything. Yeah, they can continue to produce music, and that's how they were staying relevant. And that's well, all well and Beat good. Breaker made a home on Twitch and and was yeah. doing his thing there. And I think a lot of people have done that. Those guys that have an audience already were really more successful on right, Twitch. Right. It's funny. I was listening to Suji from Scam right. on another pod on the HMC podcast. And they asked him straight up, like, are you going to book DJs from Twitch that are killing? And he's like, no, right. I'm going to go back to booking the beat breakers and, right. uh, you know, Eric deluxe and fives and whoever else. And like, I thought that was really interesting too. It's just to like it's two totally different things. There but. were, there were a few good clips out of that guys go check that out. I mean, I, I know it's not, you know, not usual that you have a podcast, so you can check out another podcast, but that, the, the HMC stuff's really dope. That and that episode in particular. What is it? Fourth Fourth Meal, I think it's called. I think so. So yeah, it's Eric Deluxe and uh, and DJ Five Headliner Music dudes. Good dudes. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Smart dudes, and you know they're at the top of the game in in the traveling. Yeah. You know, open format game. So. Yeah. That that particular the clips that came out of that particular episode. I haven't listened to the whole thing. I have to go do that. But yeah. Those those clips were. He had a couple of gems in there that they talked about pay. Yeah, it was a big one. Um, and it, it mirrored a lot of the stuff. That it's just interesting about. to hear uh, Sujit, who's booking, you know, bigger artists, you know? Right. And he has a really strong Twitch presence, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, those guys are streaming oh, all well, the time. Well, they have that, the, the office that they just, yeah. that's set up constantly for, I, it feels like, for whoever wants yeah. to just go in and play. We always talk about how, like, you listen to somebody talk and you can tell why they're successful. And, like, you hear him talk and you understand why he gets it. He and, still like, fucking looks like he's, like, 22 <laughs> it's ridiculous he throws his birthday party every year and it's like the annual 40th <laughs> birthday party or whatever he calls it or 35th birthday party whatever he says oh man but yeah man i think uh to hammer home our point about just like getting back to to working hard and it actually paying off like i, I feel like it's coming i have the busiest weekend i'm making the most money i've made in over a year and a half yeah. this weekend 
we have a bunch of nightlife stuff. I book, I, pro, I have a wedding that I booked and I put another DJ on, you yeah. know, there's like a lot of shit happening. Yeah. There's a lot. It's really encouraging to see New York city, uh, that we've been able to reach out to New York city venues and that they're looking to book, not just us looking to book anybody. So yeah. Really. That's an encouraging sign that this area uh, particularly is getting back to normal. Yeah. Well, New York's been behind us, even Jersey. So it's like, it's incredible. It's crazy. Yeah. Just catch up. Let's go. Bye. So, all right. So to transition out of that, we we've had this conversation off air too, but like, we're now at a, a seasonal change, right? Things are starting to open up more and more and more. Like, what's the state of DJing and, and like club life going to look like as far as music? I think musically, I think it's what we said, what we had thought, and it's going to be high energy. I, I think it was Carlos Melange episode that we talked about it. That long time ago. A long time ago. That it's going to be high energy. We might see that like, not the EDM boom that we saw in 12, but I think you're going to have, you're going to have the, a similar sound. And then I, you know, we were talking about it too. I think like, like you said that the festival vibe, I'm not into, I'm into EDM, big room EDM. I'm not into like hard festival. Like tracks. heavy synth I'll never, driven. I'll never play that stuff live. Um, I like the, the newest, like the 138 stuff that's out, like 140. That, that like side that's, trance that's, shit. Timmy Trumpet's playing. Yeah, that's like the shit Ferrari makes. That's too, that's too much for me. <laughs> it's too much. It's not my style. I'd rather like, like a Vici EDM. Like that's as big as I'm getting. Yeah. You know, I, but, and I think feel good, energetic dance music. That's what's going to be popping because. That, that's just everybody's mood coming out of this, I think. Yeah. I could be wrong. I was I was with Perari today, and he was talking to me about a, an artist that he works with who was like, yo, we need, like, party till you die type shit. Yeah. Like, huge, big festival, like, rip my mask off and fucking jump into the sky <laughs> type shit. But, like, is that going to translate over to club? Uh, it, it, it will for peak hour, right? So, I, I think if you... If you play your set correctly, you have that window where you can get away with it. So like, what about like taking like Pitbull, don't stop the party and just making it like different and bigger? I th well, that's what you're going to see in our market. You're going to see us have to do that. Like something. those edits are the ones that are going to really work. Right, 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 right. Because even when we want to go and play deep or tech, like I just play your guys' remixes. Yeah. Because you just lay pop vocals on them and then you can get away with it that way. Right. Um, that's just what our market wants and needs yeah. uh, in order to be successful. So that, that is the formula, right? It's something I was saying yeah. today, I actually was writing you a description of your, of, of the cream mix. And I, I, I put something like, yeah, creams, like typical pop vocal over whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's just a staple, yeah. you know, but that's the staple for our market. And, you know, you, you've learned that. And I think, all of our guys have learned that. And that's why they're successful in this market. Yeah. Um, as far as festivals are concerned, like, yeah, they can, those guys can just play whatever the hell they want. Yeah. It's funny. There's definitely certain venues where I can get away with playing a deeper bass tech vibe. Mm -hmm. But even if you play like originals in that world, you still need to come back with a vocal that Always. somebody knows. Yeah. So I, I do think that stuff, like the kind of like big, deeper big room, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like that stuff's going to work. And I do think maybe some of these bigger records that come out might pop off when the dance floors open and masks are off and people can have fun again. <laughs> I went over to the EDM section in Beatport uh, this week and it was so cheesy. Yeah. Like horrible. I don't, if it remains cheesy and the vocals are terrible, like the lyrics were horrible, who's writing these songs? They just give up horrible and if it remains like that it's going to be hard for that sound to ever come back i think you're right like that deeper like the chris lake fisher stuff with pop vocals that's all that's the best way i could describe it is those two guys yeah because right? i think they kind of kick-started years ago kick-started the sound where it's be able to be a little more down tempo but still be energetic right if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think like the EDM electro style is is different. It's way different now, you know, where it is a deeper vibe. 
it's more lasers and right. I'm I was trying to pull up. It's it's just a little different. Um, the players have changed. The players haven't changed in EDM. I went over there and like David Guetta's still making tracks, and it's still like the same cast of the characters over there. And but the music is it's just not that popular. Right? right? It's or, not it's not that good. Yeah, it's not that good. You know, not I to agree. say that Guetta's fallen off, like because that's never going to be the case. The guy's been in the game for over twenty years. Um, but like, you know, the the. the I don't know. They're just not making quality music yeah. currently. I watched a video that David Guetta uh, in Ibiza, he had he held some sort of like um, production okay. academy or something. Yeah. And there's video on YouTube, and I watched it, and like, it's fucking awesome. He's he's dropping gems. He basically like describes like side chaining and like he kind of started a new way of how he side chained that now like everybody does mm. in in production. So it's just like a super cool video to see it from 2012 or whatever it was from. Oh, is that one was from? Yeah, it was a little older. Okay, but it was good. I saw a, a video of him like making a track on the like on the fly. Really? While he was DJing, it was pretty incredible. I'm gonna pull this video up. Let's definitely see. check that out. Yeah, it's, it's called cool. Burn Studios Residency 2012. David get a masterclass. It's like 20 minutes. It's awesome. You should definitely go watch it wow, if you're sick. producing music yeah. or just interested in. Right, how this Any stuff this. gets made. Super cool. All right, well, all right. Speaking of like that EDM boom from what was that, 12, 11? Yeah, somewhere in there. Well, you posed the question because there's a question that you came up with. Oh, you want me to ask the question? Right. All right, so, so I'm not taking the credit for it. If you you came up with it, I was I, I was thinking randomly. Like Justin always makes fun of me. My roommate always makes fun of me because he claims that like. I don't know music and <laughs> 80s cream. You don't know that so Like all day, he'll make fun of me. And it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't know that music. I just have a lane that I'm into. And when I'm into something, I dive deep. I don't, I don't go wide. We talked about this on a previous right. episode, right? So if you could transplant yourself and go back to any era of music to be like the DJ, right? Right. What era would that be? Or Jesus where would you Christ. want to be? Do you know yours? I have a couple different ones. Um, I think I think my first answer will surprise you. But do you? Do I you mean, know? My, my knee-jerk reaction is 54. Studio 54 era? I No, like if I had to compare, like wouldn't it be the era? Like uh, I like want to actual play 54 and that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Even if it's just once. Well, when what is that? Seventies? That's late seventies. So that so fifty four. The misconception about fifty four is that it was open for a long time. It was not. It was open for a very short period of time. I think it was like eighteen months. They just stabbed, printed money, um, and then Rubel was uh, the owner. Steve Rubel was, you know, money laundering and all this stuff. Yeah, and, and got pinched. Um. So that was like. 70 he went to jail and then like 80 they tried to bring it back and like that sound went away so just to be in that place and play that music there specifically that would be it that's very i mean that because if I, if i'm the dj of that time you'd be playing there right i mean i guess they had their one guy yeah think, and that's all but i think that's what that's what it would be because there are so many ridiculously if, if people go back and not like don't go get the soundtrack of 54. Go dig into like deep disco stuff. That's the stuff that's really good. Not like the commercial, like when somebody says, I'll play some disco and you play Bee Gees. Like that's not disco. Yeah. You know, and I've been yelled at before when I was younger, like, dude, that's not disco. Like, yeah. I used to hang out at 54 and these are the records. And I had older guys like, give me CDs. Like these are, these are the records to play. Um, Man, I'd love to see a folder and listen to those songs. I, I wish I had them. <laughs> I wish I had them. They were in... That I might actually, I got to look in my CDs. I still have my CD books. Yeah, we looked through it that one day. There pro there's probably one or two in there. But yeah, I think because people were there for the music right. and the drugs. I think that's the main, the number one thing, right? Like pre-cell phone era, right. where like people are out and going out to dance. Yeah. Like that's, that's criteria number one for me. The I fact that like those people carry those tracks still 45 years later, 40 years later. Yeah. And they're like, 
you got to play this record. Like this was a hot record then. It's not record then. It's like those people were there for music. Kind of like how, kind of like how the, the, the Guidos back in like 99, 2000, yeah. 2001, like we, like everybody showed up. Sure. There was plenty of drugs being taken at some like surf club, but people were there, like showed up on Sunday to surf club for the D, the particular yeah. DJ that was hundred percent. Um, that was even happening through the the mid to to 2010s because like when I would go, people were going because they wanted to listen to DJs right. or, or or artists. So, now, were they gonna pop seven mollies in the day? Maybe I don't know, or take some ketamine or God <laughs> knows what else. So I, probably, I feel like that uh, they they had a very much a same uh, same type of person that went to 54 like. Well, their kids went to surf club. Yeah, you know. So I think it was like kind of ingrained in that kind of uh, uh, in that crowd where like music was a big deal. Yeah, that's always the hope, right? Is that you want to play a place that it is all about just playing great music. Yeah. So I think that would be my second criteria, right? So the first would be an era where it's not all about cell phones and video and Instagram. Right. That's number one. Number two, it had to be an era of music that I fucking loved. Okay. And I was like super deep in on. Right. So my answer would be, strangely, as a hip hop DJ right. and producer in like the late 90s, early 2000s, we'll call it. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because I've told my story on, on the show before, but like I was so deep into like the underground hip hop producer world I had all the connections. Right. I was hanging out at places where Premier was hanging out. And like, I knew a bunch of hip hop artists and rappers and producers. So like, I felt, I feel like I picked that era because number one, I love the music so much. Yeah. And number two, I feel like if I was in it, I could have grown and, and spread my wings pretty quickly, especially into the production side of things. Production, sure. Because I was so in it. But in on the DJ side of things, like what was... I'm trying to remember like what, yeah, like Miami, the, the whole go-to spot. Miami was all hip hop. <sighs> yeah, I guess it was. It was all uh, mostly hip hop. Yeah. I, I always tied house music to Miami because of winter music conference. Yeah. Obviously, but really regularly. Right. Like all the, even now all this, like it's all hip hop. Yeah. It, I guess it hasn't changed in that regard too, too much. But like that early 2000s, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like what was big in New York. The Sunday Tunnel Party. Yeah. That was the... Yeah. That that might still be, to this day, the biggest hip-hop party to ever be thrown like that was a weekly. I want to do all the stuff that Riz was doing. <laughs> was he, I mean, I'm sure he was hanging out there. He, Riz told me one of the best stories of all time. So Riz is a thousand percent one of my DJ idols. He probably doesn't even know that, but he like got me hooked up on Crooklyn Clan and we DJ together at DJs of all places and me listening to him play like EDM bangers all day, that, which, which is, is crazy. Mind blowing. I, incredible. It's still mind blowing <laughs> this many years later. I know, but he used to tell me stories of how he used to play at Tunnel and really? like one day, uh, some big dude taps him on the shoulder and goes, yo, you're the only DJ in New York that's playing my record right now. And it was Notorious B.I.G. And I forget what, it might have been, um, I don't remember what song it was he told me. Like early Biggie. Jeez. Whatever the song was, but like he was, he got tapped him on the shoulder and was like, yo, much respect. Like you're the only DJ in New York that's playing my record right now. Where did he get the record from? I oh. don't, I don't Puff, know. Puffy was sending shit out. Like yeah, I mean, he, then. And and Riz was on the radio too, so he had a lot of right. he had a lot of connections and stuff. But right. like, you know, what Puffy's like hustle. Like he had that every every person that worked at the radio station probably had yeah. those records. You know. So yeah, like that era to me would have been my favorite. Like early Biggie, early two thousands when all that like two thousand hip hop started coming out. Well, early Biggie, right? Would have been what ninety four? Yeah, maybe not early, but maybe like like you know. What is that? Would that be like post, like post death, right around when he was when he was huge? Yeah. Well, right, because he 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 was big, and then he died, and then that album dropped, and it was ridiculous. And like every single song was a classic. Yeah, I don't know. I was trying to think of like other times that would have been really cool to be a big DJ, and like 
that as a house DJ, because obviously that's kind of what I like to do now. As a house DJ, I mean, I think we, I think we, we lived, lived, we lived a good era. Yeah, yeah, we lived a very good, the EDM boom, being in Hoboken at West Five during the EDM boom, that's like, it's just a perfect scenario because there wasn't, I guess there was one other like club club, right? No, there was a bunch. Were there? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, which, where, well, where Birch was. The yes. W, Teak, whatever Birch was. Yeah, but no, but the I played the W at that point and we, we weren't, it wasn't like EDM driven. That was a hip hop. That was more. Well, the W played more format. like a New York City open format. Room. Right. Yes, absolutely. But I'm thinking like another place that just catered to like, if you wanted to go out and hear EDM, uh, like EDM bangers, stuff. where were you going to go? And I think West Five was that, yeah. that place. Um, so I think we both stepped in shit being there while that was going on. Yeah, it was fun, man. Um, so, I mean, outside of that, yeah, I mean, that's I, I honestly, I never got to DJ Pasha, which breaks my heart a little bit because I, sk I skipped my gig there. Pasha was definitely a place where I loved hanging out. And like it, it, at the time for house music, that was like one of the main spots, right? Yeah. I, I had a gig there and I fucking skipped it. And I was like, what I, do you mean you skipped it? I, I was supposed to play with. I was playing with a live performer at the time. So when I played Love New York City, which a bunch of really great DJs had played there, I played the front room there with a live performer, somebody who was making beats on the fly. Sick. And then I was DJing on the side and we'd kind of bounce back and forth. It was cool. It was like a cool little act. And we were, I was supposed to, he got booked there and he was like, well, if you want to come down, come play. Something was happening per, on my personal side of things. And, and I just never... Man, I was like, dude, can't make it. Can't. Make it. it was in the basement, to of all places, like the best spot. <laughs> and he told me, he's like, well, when it came to the DJ part, he's like, I just literally played Lime, uh, 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 Lime's big record from the seventies. Like I played it like three or four times. Really? Yeah, I swear to God. He's an eccentric dude, obviously. Yeah. Like he was, you know, I feel like those analog junkies, very artistic. He was just like, I'm just doing do what I want. Lime. Babe, we're going to love tonight. That's the track. For you guys listening, if you're watching this, um, type in the comments, like, what era you would have wanted to, to be, like, the main act in. Because I'm yeah. interested to see what, like, the majority of people would say. Yeah. I In the 2000s, like, in, like, the mid-2000s, oh, well, AM. AM, that, that was, AM's time was, that was a whole right. situation, too. It's just a lot of good music, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think all eras had uh, obviously places that were the place to play, which would have been really fun to play at. But I think that's how I look at it. Right. Because I, I feel like eras get um, kind of, you can pinpoint a place to, this is why this happens. Um, I don't know, like off the top of my head, I'm thinking bungalow eight was like the super hard place to get into all the celebrities hung out there. And the music that they played in there was like indie rock. And then, about like a year later and disco too. They actually played a bunch of old disco and like a year or two later, like indie rock started to pop off. And like, I felt like that, that was like a staple for, for New York stuff. So yeah. like, depending on where you hung out, like I think you can have a different opinion. So yeah, I'd be interested to see what people say about that too. Cause I have a million places. <laughs> I have like a million places that I could put certain genres to and why they spawned. Yeah. Pasha's the one place for me that I, if I, I wish I got to play. Yeah. Anywhere else around here, I've gotten to play at least once pretty much that I could think of or would want to play. That sound system. Yeah, it was sick. It was ridiculous. Did they have the phase, phase one? Is that what it was called? I'm not sure. Exactly what. One? I forget. I forget what it was called. But I remember sitting in the bottle service and watching there. They had like a screen that had like other clubs around the world that their system was all kind of, I don't know if it was controlling it or whatever, but it was labeled like, like all the other function Milan. one systems was or like, whatever. Yeah, it was like Milan and England. And I'm like, geez, but it looked like it was like a computer. So I, it looked like it was, you know, that they, they could manipulate things yeah. in other places. Really interesting. That place, they dumped a lot of money into that after factory. Um, factory system was legendary too. But that, I think that got moved out of there. Man, New York City club uh, history.
it's, it's, it's fun to think about the places that we used to hang out with and then like making those connections that you can skip the line or walk in the back staircase right. or like go in the DJ booth. And that's like even before DJing. Yeah. Which is cool, you know? Yeah. But there was also a lot more places back then. But there were there were actual clubs. Man. Maybe <laughs> one day again there'll be there'll be more. New, New York's tough though. You know what? Like they they scaled back and and we we're still at this place where they scaled back and then the shutdown happened. And who knows what's gonna come for big time nightclubs for like thousand plus thousand person venues. We'll see. I don't know. All right. Well, it's a good place to wrap it. We're wrapping because we got to go work. <laughs> yeah. We've had a jam packed day, but we're both running to Jersey city shortly Yep, to go rock our gigs. If you're around in Jersey, Gary will be here all weekend. Come say what's up. Yep. Give him your rundown. Where are you at this weekend? Six to six tonight, six to six tomorrow for drag brunch. One to four tomorrow night at shepherd for Joe, the owner's birthday with Doug spin. That's going to be a good time in Hoboken. And back in Hoboken on Sunday for brunch to see Cream play at Wicked Wolf and then head over to my gig at 80 River with Chris Kent. DJ with a lot of people this week. Yeah, I like nice. it. Yeah. And I will be around Hoboken, Jersey City all weekend as well. Um, hopefully we see you guys. Yep. And thank you guys for listening to this episode. My name is Cream. Gary W. Check us next week. Peace. Peace, guys.